Thank you very much for coming in this celebration in honor of our beloved saint, Father Pio. We are here today because we are celebrating indeed the 51st anniversary of his passing, or better say, for his entering into eternal life. Almighty ever-living God, who gave your power to the man-made perfect Saint Pio, the strength and the peace of sharing the cross of your son, so that he had a singular grace to reach out to people, to heal, to cure, to confess, to give comfort and solace and pardon, to lighten the burden of the oppressed, to free people from their own prisons and burdens that fought their way towards spiritual and human growth. The foundation who made us possible, the event hosting here after we had a wonderful celebration for Cardinal O'Brien has allowed us to make this beautiful building available once again to the St. Pierre Foundation. I would like to invite Mr. Pope to say a few words. Thank you. I'd like to welcome all of you for coming for this special event. And I would also like to say that our home is your home. And we're privileged and honored to have this event uh, here tonight. And we would be privileged and honored to have many more. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. What we have done in these five years is probably, you will see in a while, it's remarkable. Remarkable because it's not, this is not the foundation run by man. This is foundation run by the Holy Spirit of Padre Pio. So nothing can be achieved by us if Padre Pio was not behind us. It's wonderful for everybody to be here for what I think is a, an amazing uh, foundation. Luciano has done a, a terrific job and um, I'm honored to be a small part of it, I really am. But also, uh, Father Gasparic, who is here tonight, when I was working at um, ESPN WABC, our offices were in Madison Square Garden, and so St. John the Baptist Church was about a block away. So uh, back in the early 2000s, at lunchtime sometimes, I would walk across the street, and they had a, a beautiful little area, garden area, that I would just kind of relax, have some lunch, and I got to know uh, Brother Sal, who was still, who's back again, uh, and I just happened to walk by the church the other day uh, before I went over to CNN, and so I stopped in and saw Brother Sal, but there was the veneration and, and the relics of the Padre Pio, so it's a wonderful connection. I'm glad that, uh, that we all have a chance to um, be with Padre Pio in some way, shape, or form. So. Thank you for having him in your heart. Thank you for having uh, spent time with us tonight. And God bless all of you. Uh, this, is, uh, this is not my first rodeo with the Padre Pio Foundation. Uh, as, as you saw up there on the screen, my wife Karen and I have been, we're, we're blessed to, uh, to receive an award from the foundation. And, and uh, I have uh, tried to do what I can uh, to, uh, to be helpful. Uh, but it, I will tell you that uh, Padre Pio in particular has a very special place uh, in our family. Uh, it, uh, I'll tell you a, a, a personal story that uh, where he touched our lives directly. We have a big societal problem in this country. Not just this country, but in the world. And I, I know people think eco economically, I mean, you look around this area, obviously it's doing great. The country's doing great economically. But we're not doing great. In some respects, we're, we're in a second depression. This isn't an economic depression. This is a depression of spirit and of mind. The rates of depression are the highest they've ever been in this country. The unhappiness, the discord, all of which is because we have separated ourselves from what's important in life. And we have rejected what Padre Pio embraced, which is the cross and suffering. We see suffering as something to be avoided, not something to, to use as, uh, as sacrificial and, and drawing closer to the Lord. This foundation can do, is it gonna change the world? No, but it can change dozens, hundreds, thousands potentially of lives and souls for Christ. And just the work of bringing Padre Pio to those churches that you saw these people lined up, you say, well, you know, those people already believe. But in a world today where a church has fallen on hard times, they need to be fed. 
they need that connection that says, yeah, there is good in the church. Foundation is doing a lot of very positive things right now, but it can do more. And, but we all know it can't do more unless we get help from people who are willing to join this effort. And so I just want to encourage you all uh, to, uh, to do what Padre Pio said. Pray. Pray about what, why God called you here, why you're here tonight, why you had an opportunity to, uh, to touch the relics and, the, and, and venerate and be reminded of who this man is and how he might have an impact on your life like he's had an impact on mine. I sort of feel an obligation, uh, uh, just of gratitude, to do what I can to help him as, and, and his foundation help others like they help me. And so I, I hope that you consider the, uh, the opportunity you have before you to get involved with a group of really good-hearted people who are not here, this is not a big foundation that has big overhead and spending lots of money on lots of things. This is a very humble group of people who deeply love this man for very good reason and believe that he has a message that the country probably should hear more of. Getting engaged and involved with this foundation and having the message of Padre Pio be a much more prominent and important one in the lives of many people in this country, I pray that you do. Thank you and God bless. We're being told through these comments from these two gentlemen that we should be mindful that we, we know of St. Pio. And I think it's our, our role to leave here tonight and find a way to help others know about St. Pio. Because you'll change their lives. You will absolutely change their lives. And when you change their lives, you'll change the lives of other people as well.